So today I'll be presenting research I've conducted in the Rehan lab at York University towards my master's thesis, looking at social environment and sibling cooperation in a small carpenter bee. So I just wanna offer a brief introduction to social behavior in Hymenoptera, broadly categorized by increasing complexity. So beginning of course with solitary species like this digger wasp that uh, provisions its offspring but no longer associates with them to subsocial species like this allodapine bee that engages in maternal care of its offspring, to incipiently social species that we've already heard about, like this Xylocopa virginica, a uh, large carpenter bee, in which some nests have cooperation and others do not, to primitively social species in which cooperative roles are flexible and frequently determined uh, behaviorally, to, of course, advanced to social species like these uh, harvester ants, uh, that show obligate uh, division of labor. So the small carpenter bee Sertina calcarata is a stem nesting bee that has a number of traits that make it particularly useful for studying social behavior, particularly experimentally. So they're nest loyal and they show extended care of their offspring. So they're subsocial, uh, occupying the simplest category of social behavior in Hymenoptera. So their life cycle begins with overwintering uh, adults from the previous uh, season. From the previous year, rather, they then emerge in the spring to construct their own nests and begin provisioning their brood cells. Throughout the summer, they continue to care for their offspring by uh, cleaning brood cells. And then finally, in the late summer and fall, they engage in a second period of foraging where they actually feed adult offspring into the nests. They're also facultatively social. So, mothers in a subset of nests will produce this smaller, underprovisioned uh, individual. Uh, the dwarf eldest daughter, typically in the first cell of the nest. And she will emerge in the second uh, foraging season to actually provision her siblings who remain within the nest, foraging with the mother. So for my research, uh, understanding this a critical concept is phenotypic plasticity. So of course, the variation of the same genotype by environment. And for my research, uh, it, this is in particular social environment. So you have regular daughters, but then you also have dwarf eldest daughters who exhibit this very distinct foraging phenotype. So understanding how that phenotype is actually produced. So for my first project, I looked at social environment in uh, Serotina calcarata using observation nests. So we know from previous research that social environment is important to Serotina calcar calcarata, in particular uh, maternal presence. So you can see here maternal presence reduces uh, both aggression and avoidance in this species. And we know this from circle tube research. So you can see on the right, classic aggressive behavior of presenting a sting, C posture, and also avoidance within the circle tube, refusing to pass one another. So we were interested in how does this actually translate into behaviors within nests during the conditions of long-term cohabitation. And we wanted to see how mothers and dwarf eldest daughter presence influence behavior within nests. So we constructed observation nests and we applied two uh, manipulations as well as a control. So control nest of undisturbed uh, phenotypes and then nests with mothers removed and both, both mothers and dwarf eldest daughters removed. So wild nests were uh, collected from artificial nests uh, established in the wild and they were mounted in dark boxes so that they could be filmed. And they were also provided with foraging arenas, you can see in the second panel, so that we could uh, collect uh, count foraging trips. And you can see we provisioned them with sugar water and flowers for pollen. The interior nests were longitudinally opened and a plastic shield was applied to them. And the interiors of the nests were filmed using an infrared camera. So in total, we had 35 nests with 13 control, 13 with mothers removed and nine with both mothers and dwarf eldest daughters removed. And we filmed them during the late social cohabitation period in uh, August, in uh, July and August, for a cumulative 679 observation periods of 50 minutes. So we then scored behaviors using a previous ethogram, and we also found a number of novel behaviors that were individual. And we used previous research to categorize these behaviors into five categories. So individual behaviors, aggressive behaviors, avoidant, following, and tolerant behaviors. 
Overall, we found that removal treatments drastically increased overall activity within nests. So there was a significant increase with the removal of both mothers and the removal of mothers and dwarf eldest daughters. And we also found that aggressive behaviors are very common within nests. They're highly frequent. So 44% of behaviors were aggressive across all treatments. And you can see that this is actually close to the number of individual behaviors like grooming and uh, nest cleaning. Next, we constructed a PCA to look at the effect of our treatments on overall uh, interactive behavioral categories. And as you can see, we found that there's considerable overlap between nests among treatments, but that nests with mothers and dwarf eldest daughters were associated more strongly with aggressive behaviors. We then constructed general linear mixed models with Poisson and negative binomial distributions to look at uh, particular behavioral categories. And we found that aggressive behaviors increase under removal treatments, but only significantly so when mothers and dwarf eldest daughters were removed. And we also found that tolerant behaviors increased as well under both removal treatments. And we found no difference in avoidant and following behaviors between treatments. We also found that foraging was the lowest in the absence just of mothers. So it appears that when you remove mothers and dwarf eldest daughters, regular daughters do engage in some foraging on their own. So our key findings were that activity in nest increases dramatically uh, under removal treatment. So mothers may be producing some sort of social hierarchy that reduces overall interaction within the nest. We also found that DEDs do moderate aggression somewhat within nests and that daughters are more tolerant in the absence of mothers and DED. So they're interacting more in a tolerant fashion, possibly to negotiate uh, foraging roles. And we also know that they do in fact do this. They take on a foraging role on their own when they're not being fed by a mother or dwarf eldest daughter. So for the second section of my research, I looked at behavioral genetics of cooperation in Saratina Calcarata. So I looked at the system in the wild. So we know from previous research from Michael McCat that dwarf eldest daughters act as alloparents. So they actually forge with the mothers. So you can see during this uh, early period, June and July, mothers are provisioning their nests. But then in August and September, dwarf eldest daughters emerge to forage alongside the mother. And we know that this happens more often in nests that have been orphaned. So social environment is important to this foraging behavior. So once again, I was interested in how is this phenotypic plasticity produced? Why is the dwarf eldest daughter so different from her siblings? So I looked at the effect of uh, DD presence and mother's presence on regular daughters and dwarf eldest daughters and the effect of DDs on siblings. So to do this, I created four plots of artificial nests with 30 fo focal nests at each plot at two sites. So for a total of 240 artificial nests and using cup traps, I marked foraging individuals with an enamel pen as they left to forage in the morning. I identified mothers by wingwear since they were, uh, they've been working from the previous year and in the early part of the summer. And I identified dwarf eldest daughters by their relatively smaller head size relative to mothers and siblings. So we attended nests daily from 8 a.m. when foraging uh, begins at its earliest to 4 p.m. at two blocks per day throughout August. We had very good weather, so there were only two or three days where we couldn't conduct observations and collect uh, foraging bees. We removed foraging bees, uh, focal foraging individuals consecutively, opportunistically as they left to forage to uh, establish our treatments. And we preserved all our collected bees in RNA later at minus 20. So 103 focal bees were collected, and then 14 of these were selected for sequencing after uh, being, uh, having whole heads extracted for RNA and establishing their phenotype, whether or not they were in a nest with a mother absent or present. And they were sequenced using uh, 150 base paired end reads using an Illumina NovaSeq 6000 at a minimum of 50 megabases depth. So in total, we had uh, zero mother removed ordinary daughters and three mother removed dwarf eldest daughters a control of ordinary daughters who foraged with the mother's presence. We had five mothers in total and three dwarf eldest daughters with mothers present. So
So to get an overall picture of differences in gene expression among these groups, we conducted a PCA of gene expression. And as you can see here, there's considerable variation among samples, but uh, mothers in the gray did overlap somewhat with control daughters, with mothers present. And we found that dwarf eldest daughters with mothers absent had this variation where one sample overlapped, but the other two were distinct. And of course, regular daughters appeared to be highly distinct, clustering together uh, very strongly. Looking across the next four PCAs, we found that regular daughters and mothers were highly associated and dwarf eldest daughters and uh, control under control and removal treatments were similar as well. So next I use DSEC2 to conduct an analysis of differentially exp expressed genes among these groups. And we found that they were highly distinct. Regular daughters had the largest complement of distinct genes followed by mothers, then dwarf eldest daughters with mother removed and then controlled DEDs. So this is an illustrative subset of genes and GO terms uh, for GO enrichment among these differentially expressed genes. So in mothers, we found uh, that their genes were enriched for generation of precursor metabolites and energy electron transport chains, as well as methylation. In the control of all these daughters, we found that they were enriched for RNA dependent DNA biosynthetic processes DNA metabolic processes and DNA biosynthetic processes. So a lot of DNA. Mothers were associated with transmembrane transport, cation transport, carboxylic acid, and metabolic process, uh, carboxylic acid metabolic process. And we found that regular daughters were enriched for cellular protein metabolic process, carbohydrate metabolic process, and macromolecule modification. Next, we performed a weighted gene co-expression network analysis to look at how genes were co-expressed in modules among our different groups. So we found that among mothers, these, there was a module, there were modules with, that were enriched for response to nutrient levels as well as, C, as CGMP biosynthetic process. We found that DEDs with mother removed were enriched for response to external stimulus, response to light stimulus and negative regulation of peptide hormones. DEDs with mother present were negatively associated with a module enriched for circadian and sleep, uh, circadian sleep wake cycle, as well as mating behavior and sex discrimination. And finally, regular daughters were enriched for sensory perception of smell, positive regulation of insulin receptor, and sensory perception of taste. So our conclusion was that from this was that social environment does have a significant impact on gene expression. And this includes key developmental hormones and pheromones, including PBAN and ectosteroid. And we found that there are also genes associated with possible uh, processes of circadian rhythms, as well as response to temperature that were differentially expressed, particularly among uh, between dwarf eldest daughters with mothers removed and mothers present. Finally, uh, to summarize, Social environment does play a critical role in mutual tolerance and cooperation. We saw uh, significant effects in, on behavior and gene expression. And we found that cooperative behavior is also highly flexible. So regular daughters will take on a foraging role. And finally, we found that gene expression is influenced by social environment. So for future directions, I'd like to take this in. I'd like to understand the influence of nutrition alone on brain gene expression uh, before any social behaviors have emerged between adults, before uh, adult closure. And I'd also like to establish how flexible cooperative roles are negotiated among size match individuals and expand this study to uh, compare with closely related species of Serotina who are solitary. So with that, I'd like to thank the entire Rehan lab. Uh, all of this work was very cooperative, was very collaborative, and I got a lot of help from everyone in the lab. And I'd also like to thank all of our funders. Okay, go ahead, Kurt. Yeah, hi, excellent talk. Um, I'm not sure I'm gonna get this out right, but in your first set of experiments, you had three treatment groups uh, where you removed the mother and you removed both the mother and the, the small daughter, smallest eldest daughter. I'm curious why you didn't have a treatment group where you just removed this. The, the, there was one more treatment group you didn't have. 
Yeah, it was purely for sample size uh, based oh. on the number of nests that we could collect and that survived um, the opening and the, the treatments. Okay. So in order to get the sample size and um, there were quite a few nests that were filmed that didn't uh, survive and those were not used in the, the data. Mm 